Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about similar polygons. So similar means they have the same shape, same exact shape, but not necessarily the same size and actually not the same size. If they were the same shape and the same size, then that's what's congruent, okay? I always kind of talk about turtles What for some reason when I talk about similar. I say, if you have two baby turtles, they are congruent to each other. They're most likely just going to be identical images of each other. But a baby turtle and the big mama turtle, those are similar to each other. It's like the baby turtle is just this mini version, same shape, but if the whole thing was just expanded proportionally to the size of the mama turtle, then they would be the same. So the shape is the same, it's just the size is different. And that's what similar means. When you have similar polygons, you're looking for these two things. You're looking for that the corresponding angles are congruent. So you have all these pairs of corresponding angles that are equal to each other. So the measures of the angles have to be equal, but the sides from the baby turtle or the small figure to the large figure have to be proportional to each other. So we need equal angles and we need proportional sides. And we would set up proportions in order to either prove that yes, these figures are similar to each other, or we would set up the proportions to solve for a missing side length of similar figures. It all depends on what kind of problem we are looking to solve, but it's all relatively the same. So if I give you this really super basic diagram, I've got two quadrilaterals here. If it says in the diagram, ABCD is similar to, so the one little squiggly line, that means is similar to, whereas that squiggly line, if it was above an equal sign, that's when it's congruent. And remember, congruent means same size, same shape. Similar just means same shape, but different sizes. So ABCD is similar to WXYZ. So if I gave you that information, if I'm telling you these two figures are similar, well, we're going to be able to match things up. So angle A is congruent to angle W. You can see they both have an angle marker of one. Angle B is congruent to angle X. Angle C is congruent to angle Y. And angle Z, it, a D rather, is congruent to angle Z. And we know that just simply because they're, of course, marked up but all the sides in similar figures are also proportional to each other. So AB over WX, so now think about that, AB over WX. So this segment over WX, so 15 over five is equal to three, yes? 15 over five, so I'm just gonna mark that. This is 15 over five is going to be the same as BC over XY. And of course, that's 12 over 4, which is also 3. So you're going to see all of these give you the same thing the way they're set up. Order matters too. You couldn't say XY over BC because then that's going to be one third. So order is incredibly important. So then YZ over, I'm sorry, other way, oh, I was about to make that mistake. So CD, which is 21 over YZ, so 21 over seven. Now with the slip up I just said with the exact thing, as long as you're consistent, you're good. Now usually when we ever we set up um, a ratio, we always go with the figure that we're starting with to the figure that we're talking to in this order, so notice, I'm referring it to them in this order. So my figure from ABCD should come before figure WXYZ. And then the last one I'm not gonna mark up, it's um, AD over WZ, which is 18 over six, which is three. So all of them are proportional. So setting up each ratio, they're all equal to each other. Now scale factor, this is what I was kind of hinting to you before. Order matters when you are stating your scale factor because that's how you have to set up your ratios. So scale factor is the ratio comparing side lengths of similar polygons. So these two triangles are similar to each other um, just based on the statement that we're given, we're told they are similar to each other. So my scale factor would be that I'd have to take a part of triangle ABC and set it over a part of triangle DEF. So here, three over six, and I know three corresponds with six because A to C 
Look how it's in written in the order A to C. See how they're the first letter and the last letter? That's going to correspond with D, F. So from D to F, I know that those are the sides that match up. So there's absolutely no confusion. So the order of your statement, your similarity statement, is incredibly important. Everything has to line up which is then equal to one half and anything else would be four over eight, four over eight is also going to be the scale factor of one half. So the scale factor from ABC to DEF is one over two. Okay, so a lot of this is gonna feel very repetitive because I'm using the exact same diagrams, but we're just making sure that we can answer specific questions based on what we're given. Uh, we can't assume anything. We have to make sure we use these rules. So if I said to you, determine the angles and sides. So um, if I was looking at these two triangles, I'd be able to say, okay, well, I've got, you know, two pairs of angles that are definitely congruent to each other. A is congruent to G. Angle A is congruent to angle G. Angle F is congruent to angle C. And I can also say that angle B is congruent to angle H. Um, so remember that third angle theorem, if two pairs of angles are congruent, then the third pair of angles are congruent. So we can say all three sets of these angles are definitely congruent to each other. And now proportions. So if I wasn't given a similarity statement, but I wanted to tell whether or not these were proportional to each other, think about the smallest side of one triangle, six, should proportionally be to the smallest side of the other triangle, four. And the same would go. The middle size size of the first triangle should hopefully be proportional to the middle size size of the second triangle. And then the largest side should correspond with the largest side. And if I set those up as proportions, um, I end up getting 3 over 2 for each one. So 6 over 4 is 3 over 2. 7.5 over 5 is 3 over 2. 9 over 6 is 3 over 2. So they are all proportional to each other. Okay. So now if I wanted to look at this diagram, okay, I've got 105, 85, 100, 105, 85, 100. So I can definitely, you know, add up these angles, subtract from 360, determine that the missing angle is 70. Well, these also would have to be seven. This would add up to be the same thing. So that missing angle is also 70. So in these two parallelograms, I know all the angles are congruent to each other. Okay. Now I just have to check for proportional sides. So I notice the two smaller sides, 5 and 5, should correspond with the 10 and 10, the two smaller sides of the other figure. So A over B, okay, the second to largest side over YX or XY. So this side corresponds with this side because this is the medium size side, and this would also be the medium size side, so that works, is equal to BC over uh, XW, 5 over 10. So right now I'm working with 7 over 14 is equal to 5 over 10, which is equal to CD, which is the largest side now. So the largest side of this uh, pa parallelogram should correspond with the largest side of that parallelogram, which is eight over 16, which is still one half. So I'm getting the same ratio. DA over ZY is just another five over 10, and they are all whoops, set equal to one half. So they all mean the same exact thing, which means that these figures are definitely similar to each other. Here, um, same idea, corresponding angles, yes, proportional sides, yes. And so this would be my official statement, is that triangle ABC. And now here's something that we just always have to make sure, I mentioned it before, is that you have to make sure that everything coordinates. So this angle A, okay, is created by the intersection of the two larger sides. So that's a big indicator to you that A corresponds with G because this is the angle created by the two largest sides. So notice A starts the first part of my statement and G is the second part. H is the side that's created by the smaller and the medium angle, medium size side, excuse me. 
So H and B, 6 and 7.5, those are in between, that angle is created by the two smaller sides of the triangle. And so that's why B and H are in that order. If the order was mixed up, then you would have, you wouldn't have your corresponding sides proportional to each other. Okay, so if I'm looking here at this diagram, okay, I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, are these two figures um, similar to each other? So I do see that I'm dealing with a parallelogram here, opposite sides are equal. So remember properties of parallelogram, um, opposite angles are congruent. So if this is 75, then this is 75. Also consecutive angles are supplementary. So if this is 75, then these are both 105. And so I have this comparison and now I'm dealing with 105, 105, 75, 75. So right now, all of my angles are congruent to each other. They all match up. And if I stopped here and I just said, oh, they're definitely similar to each other, um, we're going to be wrong because we have to set up that proportion. So proportional sides, look at this. If I set up four over six, so the largest side of the first figure over the largest side of the second figure does not equal the smaller side of the first figure over the smaller side of the second figure. It's kind of like the second one would need to be flipped. So these unfortunately do not work out for each other. These are not similar. So we have to make sure we always set up that proportion to make sure that it's true. Now, if I have two pentagons, these are two nice regular pentagons. I see all the angles are congruent. Um, all the sides are congruent of the individual pentagons, so I know they're regular. So here, all of the angles definitely match up with each other. I'm not given any calculation-wise numbers for the side lengths, but of course, one reflexive mark to two reflexive marks is going to be the same as one over two. So uh, definitely proportional sides. I put four to three there. Let's say I did say that this had a side of four and this one had a side of three over here doesn't matter what order they're in because they're all the same on um, that would match up. And then that's also true for a similarity statement. You can actually get away with matching up any of the side angles rather with any of the angles of the other pentagon because they're all identical. You couldn't do that in other figures where the angles are all different like triangles usually. Okay, now we're going to look at determining a scale factor. So we know that these two triangles, we're seeing this for the third time, we know they're congruent to each other. The scale factor would simply be the one ratio of proportional sides. So if I set up that ratio from six, so the smallest side of triangle ABC to the smallest side of triangle F, uh, GHF, six over four gives me my scale factor of three halves. So you know how we were proving they were proportional based on the sides and we got three over two simplified? That is just simply our scale factor. So if I went ahead then and I asked you for the scale factor of these two triangle, uh, these two figures rather, we saw these before, since these two are um, proportional, I'm sorry, they are similar to each other, then the scale factor is simply from ABCD to YXWZ seven to 14 or five to 10 or eight to 16, either way, you end up getting a scale factor of one half, okay? It's always the first parallelogram is the numerator or the first polygon. The second polygon goes in your denominator. This one here, since they are congruent to each other, and again, I mentioned if I just made up like a four, oh, I have a four there, my bad. If I have a four as a side and a three of a side here, my scale factor is just simply four thirds. Okay, so now the last thing is solving for missing sides with the fact that they are similar to each other. So because we know these two triangles are similar, if I wanted to set up a proportion to solve for X, let's say I didn't know that it was four. We already know it's four, we've seen this diagram a lot. You would set up a ratio that you know for a fact. So let's say 10 over five, we know we're matching those up. And then we would set it equal to the ratio that involves the variable. So this X is supposed to correspond with nine. And we know that because FH, which is where X is, is between BC. So we know for a fact that nine corresponds with that X. So as long as our order stays the same. So if I'm going 10 over five is equal to nine over X, 
I could solve this proportion using cross products and get my variable. Now, another way you could do that is you could do 10 over 9 is equal to 5 over x. That's another way you could set up this proportion. So I usually mix and match, but you can set it up as a proportion from triangle to triangle equals triangle to triangle. You can set it up two val values within one triangle is equal to two values within the other. You definitely have options. Okay, so now if I have this figure and I want to set up the proportions, um, because we know that these, or we're going to be told that these two polygons are similar to each other, we can go ahead and set up proportions. Now, by the angle measures here marked up, that of course tells me what sides match up with each other. So four of course matches up with six and five matches up with 7.5. So I can take either one of those ratios and then help me set that up so that seven gets set up with x minus one and then eight goes with three y minus um, three y plus three. So since I know four over six is definitely a ratio, I can set that equal to seven over x minus one. Again, it has to be in that order. If you set up four to six, the other one has to be seven over x minus one. They have to correspond. And then I would be able to solve cro using cross products and I end up getting 11.5. I can use that same ratio of four to six or I could use the ratio of five over 7.5. I promise you, you'll get the same answer to set up my eight over three y plus three. Again, let's use our cross products to solve, and we end up getting y equals 3. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful.